A year ago today, Lehman Brothers Investment Bank filed for bankruptcy protection. It was the biggest bankruptcy filing in US history. It was also an event that affected the global financial system. A year on from the event that shook world markets, we asked some experts for their view on the handling of the financial crisis and on what the future holds. The collapse of Lehman Brothers marked a key point in the crisis, which was triggered by US banks giving high-risk loans to people with poor credit histories. The loans were sold on to investors. When the number of people defaulting on mortgage payments rose, investors who suffered stopped buying them. This led to a severe shortage of credit in financial markets, freezing the banking system. One of the causes of the crisis we are still experiencing is partly the laxity with which a number of credit rating agency rated so-called sophisticated or dangerous products. We didn't pay much attention to these agencies and therefore to the underlying composition of the products that were sold and in the end products which were highly rated were in fact toxic or explosive products. Leaders across the globe came together to tackle the crisis in a way that had never been done before, investing huge sums of taxpayers' money on bailing out the financial industry, but also agreeing on stricter rules for credit rating agencies and increased regulation and supervision of banks. So now, one year on from the Lehman Brothers collapse, what are the experts saying? We spoke to the executive director of the National Bank of Belgium. In addition to his post at the National Bank and teaching money and banking at the Free University of Brussels, Professor Peter Pratt sits on several high-level international committees, including the Banking Supervision Committee of the European Central Bank. We asked him what he thought of measures taken so far. Given the, the importance of the problem that we have today, you can say that the policy reaction in general has been quite good. I mean, uh, it depends how you look at the problem, but if you look at the 30s, I mean, which is one of the references we have, I mean, there you had a very disastrous, you know, lack of cooperation at the world level. Now, at least you have, a, you know, a process which is reasonably okay, I would say. What remains to be realized uh, in the coming years is, is enormous, so the challenge is still there, but the first reaction, I think, are reasonably okay. Some have said the crisis is now over and things are on the up. This view is not shared by European Central Bank President Jean-Claude Trichet. The energy that we must put to the service of the appropriate reform, lessons to be drawn from the uh, crisis, uh, should, uh, should be as strong as possible, despite the fact that some are saying that we are progressively back to normal and that the reason for reform are uh, progressively vanishing. It is not the case. We would not be forgiven not to do all what is necessary to avoid the repetition of what we have observed. Ahead of the G20 summit in Pittsburgh at the end of September, some EU member states are proposing new measures. Rules that cap the salaries and bonuses of high-paid employees in the banking sector. I think bonuses is a discussion we have to have and I think there must be uh, good principles that are applied, not only principles, but implemented. But this is only one part of the problem. My view is that we need to go in that direction, uh, but it's very difficult to exclude the whole governance setting of a bank. It's not just the bonuses of the bank, it's how do you define the risk appetite of a bank, what is the business model of a bank, and the compensation system would be only one part of the whole issue of governance of risk. As well as mitigating the effects of the crisis, preventing a repeat of the mistakes that led to it has been a key objective of the EPP group. Otmar Karas was rapporteur of the Capital Requirements Directive, a key piece of legislation limiting banks' exposure to risk. This crisis is not on the end. We have to discuss what we are doing for a short term and for a long term. Uh, in this report, uh, we have many pillars. One pillar is to make the capital requirement stronger. The capital requirement of the banks and of the companies is a part of independence, uh, is a part of more flexibility, uh, and is a part of freedom. The second pillar is the supervisory boards. We, we, we have to, to fill uh, the, the, the legislation lack 
The third point is we have to look what is going on in the global world and we have to coordinate our regulation framework also with the, with the United States, with Japan and with all others and with the G20 summit uh, uh, nations. So I think that uh, we have good chances of getting out of this but the healing and the repair of the financial system, the global economy is going to be a long process. A lot has been done already to fill in the gaps in legislation that allowed excessive risk-taking in the banking sector. But not enough. While unemployment is still high, some positive signs of an upturn have seen a return to the culture of rewarding risk-taking in investment banking. The crisis is an opportunity to change things for the better in the long term. To find out what the EPP Group is doing in this area, visit eppgroup.eu. Thanks for watching.